I'll still cover some nomads. Hey everybody, it's uh, Camo Dave channel. Still covering the nomads. Yeah, some of the smaller channels, right? Anyway, we got a new one here from Laney Will Travel there, formerly of the Busking Bushkins, the Bushking Busk, the Busking Bushkins, whatever the party are. Remember that a couple years ago? Anyway, her vehicle won't start, and it's got a bunch of leaks and crap and stuffs going on and some health issues. So, but uh, Rico is there. Rico uh, was her. What is it? Was her husband, or did they get divorced? I forget. Anyway, Rico is back in her life, and everything seems to be going very nice. Steffi Lee, a very nice video here from her, giving us an update, a birthday party there, and what's going on in her life. Uh, she's, you know, she has some health issues. We'll let you watch it, and you can figure those out. But uh, everything is looking good for Steffi. I catch a real interesting video. I highly recommend Morgan Solo. This is Steffi's boyfriend. And he has this wonderful video here. Uh, it's 20, you know, it's it's amazing. Uh, he says things so well in it. Basically, um, talking about YouTube narcissism, uh, rate, growing your channel, having all these people, you know, that you don't even know telling you how wonderful you are, etc., etc. There's a lot of issues here. If you're a YouTuber, you're a content creator, you're growing your channel, you're monetizing. Uh, and um, some very interesting things here about uh, YouTube and what it can do to your psyche and uh, some interesting stuff there. So highly recommend this from Morgan Solo, Changing the Channel. At Nate Element Van Life there, he has another um, Japanese domestic vehicle, JDM, right? That he's actually building it out for somebody else. This is a different vehicle. It's in better condition, newer vehicle, I think, than what he is. It's a Toyota, you know, one of those ones with the driver's side on the wrong side. But he is uh, building it out and doing some renovations in the back. But it's not a total strip down like what he did with his Toyota JDM. When was that? A couple of, uh, was it a yearish ago? Something like that, months ago, whatever. So, uh, so good video there from Nate. E V Element Van Life. Yeah, I think he still has that element, right? We got a new one from Camper Carol who's got her van back after that little parking lot mishap that required a month, a month and a half or so of um, repairs. So it took to get the repairs. It wasn't, you know, probably weren't working on it for a full month and a half. But uh, anyway, so uh, yeah. You want to watch Tiny House Great Journey, Giant Journey, Two Nomads Who Fell in Love and Live in Their Bread Truck. Yes, we have the one, the wonderful Paul Barger and his girlfriend there in their bread truck. A nice profile here over on Tiny House Giant Journey. Again, we've got a new one from Snow and Kurt here. They are busy in um, uh, Colombia. Colombia there, Colombia. They finally got, they, they, they were waiting on a ship that was coming from Galveston, Texas, down to Panama to transport their van over to uh, Cartagena, Colombia, there on the Caribbean coast there of um, Colombia. And finally, the ship is on its way now after some repairs. So they decided to hightail it in a big jet over to Cartagena and they're exploring uh, that town in South America. And it's a really cool video. Go check it out as they wait for as they and their two kitties are waiting for their van to get uh, shipped over, which should be a, another couple of weeks, I would think. Good one here from uh, Campulance Man David there. He uh, is parking, uh, he's parked there, I, where is that, Arizona, and he's uh, got, or Colorado, I forget exactly, I, it, you know, it doesn't matter where he is, he's out west somewhere, and he's and he and gets this guy that's parked in the next campsite over, and the guy has a fire, uh, you know, you know, a fire, you know, like, you know, the fire ring there, whatever, you're not supposed to have fires, it's very dry, I guess they're Colorado, right? Anyway, that, and apparently you're not supposed to do that. And somebody else called the Rangers or the cops on that guy. And then he thought David called the police on him and he came out and was yelling at him. And, and Lefty the pit bull runs out and uh, kind of, you know, kind of puts the guy in his place. Says, hey, you better not be, ye you know, yelling at my master. And uh, anyway, it all works out okay. But, you know, what do you do? What do you do if there's a fire ban? And everything, you know, and David said... Cable's man. David said that it's very, very dry, very dry where they are. And they you could have a big fire, you know. Anyway, um, what do you do if uh, your neighbor's uh, just doesn't care and is starting up a fire? Again, he said he didn't call. He, uh, he, he, you know, but somebody else did. But somebody thought he did. So anyway, whatever. 
We have Mr. Line Scoop taking a trip, a cheap, he said he wanted to do a cheap trip in a uh, aerial plane, so he flew from Vancouver to, I think it was Edmonton, and then everybody had to guess where he was going, so he went, to, which is Alberta, right? I think it's Al Edmonton, Alberta, right? It's up there, you know, so, okay, so, um, you know, he has not left the United States of America. He, I mean, I mean, he's not left the United States of Canada. In the United Provinces, what is it called? The Dominion of Canada. He remains there, and uh, <laughs> he's, he's still there. So anyway, so uh, whatever. Uh, so yeah, nothing. Uh, what else? What else have I been watching? Huh? A number of people who are heading down to uh, Abilene, Texas, this week for the Lola Palooza Festival, which begins on the twenty-first of October. And uh, don't forget the Camo Day Papa Texas Breakfast on the October 23rd there. Beautiful Abilene, Texas. Yes. Uh, <laughs> the Nomad We Don't Talk About has been down at Disney lately. And, of course, we reported yesterday that Jax the Cat has passed away at 11 years old. R.I.P. Jax. All our deep condolences to um, you know who. And uh, we did cover that yesterday. So if you want to watch more on that. Check out my uh, channel yesterday about Jax. Uh, again, you know, I've been watching this guy's channel for five years now, ever since I've been doing Camo Day channel, and uh, Jax has always been a wonderful, instrumental, uh, you know, part of that channel. And, uh, you know, hey, you know, you get to know these animals, and uh, Jax will definitely be deeply missed. I have a phone brain. Yeah, my phone babies. Beware. Beware of the phone babies. Hey, let's do some letters, shall we? <clears throat> By Pinkerton says, the only way these Patreon-only channels were survive is to keep their YouTube channels interesting to keep, thing keep bringing in the Patreon subscribers. The media has long known that it doesn't matter so much about what's being talked about as long as you are still of interest to be talked about. I was talking about this morning, I did a video about how I'm noticing a number of uh, YouTubers moving their content over to Patreon. It's not all there yet. I mean, people are still on YouTube, but more and more and more of their stuff is gravitating over to Patreon where you have to pay to see it. Uh, now, that works if you also have a large base on YouTube. You know, you know, hundreds of thousands of subs on YouTube generates a couple hundred people that will pay fairly mightily to watch your videos over in Patreon. And as I said in my video this morning, you only need a couple hundred Patreons that are coughing up, you know, 10 bucks, 20 bucks a month to make the same amount of money that you make on YouTube with their AdSense and, you know, 50, 60, 70,000 views of every video. So, I don't know. Again, you know, if you're going to cut back and then you then when you do make that move to Patreon, you then, you know, get rid of anybody who's criticizing you. You know, you can do that now because they can't even see your videos. And uh, fewer and fewer people are going to talk about you. And uh, then guess what happens? Daniel says, nobody at the bottom of YouTube is worth paying for, including Camo Dave. Toonzy says, I don't know how the most boring channel. Oh, OK. I'm not going to mention who that is. Bloop, bloop. We won't mention that. Got so many patrons. You know, that is interesting. Uh, there are some YouTube channels that you wonder how they got so many patrons. Uh, yeah. Um, when pretty much they do the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over again. I don't know, man. Uh, SW says, Dave, are you a service geezer? <laughs> I may be a geezer, but I don't provide any service. No. Service geezer is the term we jokingly use to mainly older men that hang around, usually solo, right, at various camping events like the RTR or at a court site, and they know how to repair things, okay? They know how to fix things. They know how to repair things. And then we have these women who, um, and some guys, who um, act like, you know, they just, oh, I don't know what to do. I can't do it. I can't do it. And then the service geezer comes in and helps them out, you know, and, then, and maybe you know, gives them a little more service on some other things, which we won't talk about. I'm just saying, you know, uh, you know, but uh, they, yeah, they're, you know, they, they, they'll take their payment in different ways. They don't always take monetary payment. Tom says, as a savvy media guy, 
Uh, you know that people uh, like people who are just like them or who want to be like them or who have some sort of fantasy to offer them and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Uh, you know, we watch people. I watch people. I watch nomads because I admire what they're doing and I, you know, it's, it, I don't have to live that life. I can kind of get the idea of what it's like to live in your van. I always I say, the channels I like the best are the ones where you're solo and you're living simply, okay? And in the back of my mind, I always have this thing like, wouldn't that be cool just to get a van and just go out and live for a while solo out in the world and not worry about the apartment and the rent and the, all the other stuff? Uh, which I probably don't have the guts to really do, but it is kind of interesting to live vicariously. I think that's the word we want to watch. You want to you want to live vicariously through some of these nomads, and then when the channels just become the same old, same old, same old merch, Patreon, PayPal, T-shirts, cups, keychains. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's kind of. Time to change the channel. Uh, SC1212Able says, and then there are some YouTube channels that do very well without having Patreon, PayPal, Super Chats, or selling merch. There's a 17-year-old female soul, female singer from the UK that I follow. She averages $45,000 a month. Ooh, don't let the tax man know. Uh, from AdSense revenue, she has 456,000 subs and most of her music videos reach one to two million, reach, reach one million after two weeks. Now we got people on YouTube and I'll mention him, his name, Adam the Woo, and he gets a lot of views and he has a lot of subs. And I think he just, you know, he doesn't do, I, does he do, I think he gave up his Patreon. Didn't he say he gave up his Patreon? I have to double check on whether that's still around. And he doesn't do the super chats anymore. He did try that, but he didn't like to do them. He makes good money on just the AdSense, you know, and the YouTubers do get to that point where you just, all you need is just do your videos and the money will flow in. And, uh, you know, he could probably maximize that money even more if he did, um, you know, Patreon and uh, Super Chats, but he's, he's happy with what he's got. Not a Nomad says, why would anyone pay to watch YouTube is beyond me. I have a million other things to do rather than sit around and watch videos all day. I'm doing less and less Facebook because it's boring. You know, I used to think the same thing. You know, television's nice. When I was a kid, television was free, you know. I mean, really, you put up an antenna, you bought a television, and you could watch anything you wanted, and there was no other charges. That was it, you know. And I always thought, why would anybody want to pay for television? You know, and then a couple years later, here comes cable. And everyone's, okay, you get some more channels, you know. But, you know, it's kind of like uh, now we're paying money to watch this stuff. And then even more money for all these premium channels. And then even more money for all these sports and tiered channels. And, 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 and then it's kind of like we've come full circle. It's the same crap, you know, that we got on three or four channels back in the 60s. Now it's on 140 or 240 channels. It's just more of it. And now we're paying, you know, some people's cable bills. <laughs> Many hundreds of dollars a month. RV Chris says, building a quality YouTube channel is secondary now. I know a couple fairly new low sub channels with the emphasis on Super Chat Patreon memberships, unsurprisingly, with fewer than 100, 100 excuse me, fewer than 1,000 subs already generating full-time earnings. Yeah, you know, you can do that. People have done that with few subs on YouTube, relatively, and they're really pumping the Patreon. That's true. Uh, at present, YouTube sucks commercials every two minutes or vlogs. You just start watching and the creator stops and says, to see the rest, please go to dot, dot, dot. Yeah. Or the other one is I'm taking a break here and now I'm going to talk about uh, uh, Skillshare for 20 minutes. <laughs> but, says Chris, we still have Camo Dave, who I enjoy. Thank you. And of course, Line Screw, since I've watched him since the beginning, got to be seven to eight years now, fellow Canadian. Line Screw's been around on YouTube for seven to eight years. You know, that's interesting. I started on YouTube in 2011, but I was only doing like little uh, videos for my DCR TV media channel. Uh, you know, but I've been on YouTube now, yeah, um, 10 years. Ten. I think I had my 10th anniversary earlier this year. 
<sighs> I did 10 push-ups last night. Beantown says not sure what happened on Dave's live stream last night. Quite a few people said he got rushed to the ER right after doing three push-ups. Hope he's okay. Definitely seems a bit off in this video. I did 10 push-ups. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And finally, Rick G says, uh, not everybody likes the dramatic Nomad channels. In fact, I much prefer the relative drama of the free offerings of Slump Ted Head, Benjamin Van Man, Brian, Benjamin Van Man, Kate Cloud. Hey, we haven't heard much from Kate lately. How's the goat? Uh, Catherine Gregory, SUVRV, Tristan, etc., etc. And of course, Venture Four Wheel Drive, Venture Four WD there, Chris, over the crazy e begging crybabies. I'm sure I'm not alone in my preferences. Again, I really, sometimes I just like to sit down and watch a good half hour of Slim Potato Head and just enjoy it. You know, no drama and some uh, some good stuff there. I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to Slim tackling that cabin he bought. I really would like to see that. Uh, yeah. I'd like to see Kate Cloud do some more of her hiking. That's what I would like to see. Uh, and uh, Tristan RVing, yeah, always good stuff from him. Uh, camping out simply. Always good stuff there in the West from him. And of course, Adventure Ben Man Brian, who we see very, he's not posting as much as he should be, I think, these days. We'd like to see more from him, but he's got other things cooking, you know, this relationship with his girlfriend, ETC. All righty, everybody, that ought to do it. Thank you so much for watching. You have a wonderful rest of your Sunday, 17th of October. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend, folks. It's almost over. Vlog under.